Welcome to SNN Network Summer Virtual Event. We are pleased to introduce the next presenter for today's event, Rod Keller, CEO of Arrow. Rod, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Greetings and thank you for your interest to learn more about Arrow. Uh, first, let me share with you some information about our, around our capitalization and then I'll, I'll introduce the company. Uh, we are a public company traded on the NASDAQ. Stock price as of the beginning of the quarter was uh, just under $5. It's 35 million shares outstanding. Market cap averages around 175 million. Uh, we have about 88 million in cash and no debt and our fiscal year aligns with, with the calendar year as well. We are a company, let these slides catch up. There we go. We're, we're a company was founded in 2017 with our headquarters in Austin, Texas. The best way to describe us is we build purpose-built electric vehicles. They are automotive grade. They are street legal electric vehicles, but we use them primarily, they're used in applications for last mile delivery, micro distribution, low speed logistics, uh, cargo services, uh, growing business in mobile hospitality on university campuses. A lot of the university, as well as the NFL stadiums, government facilities, hospitals, and, and quite a few hotels and resorts. We also have an exclusive partnership with Club Car. Uh, Club Car, until recently, was a subsidiary of Ingersoll Rand, the largest golf car manufacturer in the world. Uh, they're now owned by Platinum Equity, and we work with Club Car to help U.S. organizations transition from their gas-powered vehicles to electric over the next five years. Of Club Car's dealer footprint, we do business with approximately 200 of their commercial dealerships in the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, and Club Car is now expanding it to include a number of their other dealers who also have a commercial arm to their business. There we go. Last September, we announced a strategic partnership with the Karma Automotive's Innovation and Customization Center. You may remember Karma was previously branded Fisker, uh, they were sold in 2014 to Wan Chong, and Wan Chong rebranded them Karma. What they do is they offer strategic engineering, design, and manufacturing services, and we are using them to currently build our next-generation light-duty electric truck that we announced in June. This partnership gives us the capacity to build up to 20,000 light-duty trucks and EVs over the next three years. And as I mentioned earlier, since joining the NASDAQ late last May, so 15 months ago, we've raised a little more than $100 million dollars and we have no debt. I'd also like to reemphasize, and this is important, the, the importance of the partnership that we have with Element Fleet Management. We announced that in March of this year. This partnership allows us to offer commercial customers end-to-end -end fleet management services that are critical in financing and servicing commercial fleets. So when you're talking to a C-level executive at one of the large, take for example, uh, quick service restaurant chains, you can talk about your vehicle, but when they ask, how do I store it? How do I charge it? How do I finance it? How do I maintain it? How do I repair it when it breaks down in the field? How do I insure it? And how do I dispose of it into life? Well, Element gives us this capability, and I don't know of another EV manufacturer in last mile or urban delivery that has that other than Aero. I'm also very pleased with the, the management team we have here at Aero. We've got a combination of executives with backgrounds in automotive engineering, rapid product transition, high volume manufacturing, international sourcing and operational efficiency. And we're all very much aware of the importance of focus on growth in any early stage industry and believe we are well on our way to achieve this. We've got a very competent management team, operational efficiency and, and adequate capital required for success. And we believe that we have all those, uh, all those in place. We like to describe ourselves as a disruptor among the EV companies, and we do very well. Where we thrive is really where commercial customers don't need, nor do they want to pay for all the features of a traditional automobile. If you look at this chart, it really illustrates that we provide that missing bridge among EVs between entry-level EVs in the form of scooters and electric motorcycles, like you see on the left, and the other end of the spectrum with many EVs with many of the same specs is gasoline-powered vehicles. This chart really illustrates, I think, the primary advantages of our light-duty electric truck in a campus application when compared to a typical full-size truck like the Ford F-150. 
quite often where we win is we are replacing a gas or a diesel-powered pickup truck or a van. But with that, we've got some specific physical, economic, and environmental advantages. From a physical perspective, our vehicle is 30% more narrow in width, which allows it to traverse narrow passageways and use it not only outdoors, but indoors as well. It also has a 38% better turning radius, thus delivering improved maneuverability. And lastly, the overall volume is reduced by as much as 47% when compared to gas vehicles, thus allowing it to drive most anywhere and anytime it makes parking a whole lot easier. Now, the economic advantage is quite significant as well, and in many cases is the initial reason customers have chosen our campus solution versus other gas offerings, and many customers are seeing as much as a 49% reduction in their operating expense per vehicle per year. And lastly, of course, one of the big ones is with our offering, customers are also seeing a 100% reduction in CO2 emissions. So in summarizing it, the physical, the economic, and the environmental reasons the solution versus gas is quite compelling. We believe why we're winning so many uh, so many new opportunities today. We build. I'll let this chart catch up. Uh, we build both a light duty electric truck, as I've talked about, but also a three wheeled electric vehicle. You see it on the right. Now the one on the right is not the vehicle we haven't developed, but a concept vehicle we built in 2018 is more just a test vehicle to test some other markets. The light duty truck on the on the left that we've been talking about uh, a little bit, as I said, we're now in, in our next generation development of our three wheel, but our light duty truck is designated as an LSV. LSV means a low speed vehicle. It is street legal, but it's limited to 25 miles an hour and only on streets with speed limits of no more than 35 miles per hour. It is a, a great vehicle, as I said, for campus deliveries and security and catering and housekeeping, you know, supporting large events like that. But the size of the LSV market is forecasted to grow. It's forecasted to grow fairly quickly at 16% compounded annual growth, but it's still about a seven and a half billion dollar market. Let me give you the specs on both of these vehicles. The the vehicle that we sell through Club Car on the left, it's street legal, as I said, on roads up to 35 at a 25 mile an hour clip. The first generation, or this, uh, this lead acid version we created, it's got 57 miles of range, a little more than 50. It takes about six, eight, six to eight hours to charge, but you can plug it into a standard 110 volt outlet. And when we launch this vehicle with lithium um, later this year, you're going to see an improvement in range and a significant reduction in charging time. The vehicle on the right, we're in development of the next generation vehicle to replace it, but the 311 was designed for quick service delivery, last mile services. Very much growing in popularity with restaurants who want to retake control from the delivery companies like Uber Eats, Scrubhub, DoorDash. A lot of people don't realize those aggregators take as much as 30% of a restaurant's ticket. Restaurants are also interested in retaking control of the customer experience and the data collected around delivery that they give up to these aggregators today. So as I said, we're in development of a next generation last mile delivery vehicle that we're going to announce in the fourth quarter of this year. Some other applications for our light duty truck, we announced on March 8th of this year is the nation's first electric vaccination vehicle. And the vehicle on the right that you see in the picture is a mobile hospitality vehicle. Our EVV, as we like to call it, is designed to meet the needs of on-demand and mobile clinics for the distribution of the COVID-19 testing and vaccine administration. Uh, the EVV is outfitted with medical grade equipment. It meets the CDC guidelines and can store as many as 2,000 vials of the vaccine. And the fact it's fully integrated, self-contained, and compact in size allows it to not only reach people who may not be able to get to a vaccination center, but it can also be parked indoors like in a gymnasium because it does not emit any CO2 emissions. If you look at the mobile hospitality vehicle on the right, it's growing in popularity on university campuses, sports stadiums, and anywhere food and beverage is needed without forcing consumers into large dining halls or to congregate in large crowds. And it's very customizable and growing rapidly to provide items like coffee, bagels, sandwiches, most any prepackaged food to a number of different customer segments. Growing, as you would expect, because now universities are trying to find out how do we get food and beverage to the students without forcing them to the dining halls. And we're selling more and more of these vehicles to, uh, to the food and beverage contracts on university campuses. In November of last year, we raised $10 million, part of the $100 million we raised, and it was raised from Carnegie Hudson Resources. May not, you may not know who that is, but 
it is an investment arm of Wan Chong America. Uh, Wan Chong America is a subsidiary of the Wan Chong Group, a Chinese conglomerate, and the owner of Karma Automo- Automotive, as I mentioned, formerly Fisker, as well as A123 Systems, a developer of EV batteries and a supplier of automotive manufacturers worldwide. In fact, Wan Chong Group is the, lo- the largest private company in all of, all of China. And the investment we got to them further strengthens our relationship with Karma, as well as provides us access to leading-edge lithium battery technology from A123 Systems, both of which are critical for next-generation production of our EVs, not to mention because of our relationship. It helps us on the supply side because if you follow the news, you understand uh, one of the big challenges EV manufacturers are facing today is to get, a, get enough battery supply to, uh, to support the production of their EVs. University campuses are growing to be one of the largest consumers of EVs in the country, and this is where some of Club Car's biggest relationships e- exist. A lot of people may not realize there's 1,800 universities that have at least 10,000 students and have more than 400 vehicles. And the, most of these universities have all published sustainability initiatives with plans to convert their gas fleets to electric over the next five years. The, fleets install, the fleet install base uh, is 537,000 vehicles. So you would imagine that a 20% rate of replacement, that's more than 107,000 vehicles each year for the next five years, which is a significant opportunity. I want to talk about food delivery for just a minute because in the numbers I'm going to show you that you see on the screen now, these are all pre-COVID numbers. Food delivery has become the fastest growing segment of the restaurant industry, and that was even before COVID. One of the few silver linings of COVID was the acceleration in the mix between food delivery and in-restaurant dining. And as the mix of revenues quickly accelerated delivery and reduced in-restaurant dining, restaurants uh, were faced with how to address the margin compressing cost of doing business with the aggregators, as I mentioned, like Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. Well, even before this happened, we were already in development of building our next generation purpose-built restaurant delivery vehicle focused on helping the restaurants reduce their costs, improving restaurant control of the customer experience, customer data collection, as well as an opportunity for mobile advertising, as I said before COVID hit. So I'd like to say that really the market moved faster and closer to us. So we're excited about it. Don't believe anyone else is taking the approach we are. Uh, The reason you haven't heard much from us about it is we're not going to telegraph to our competitors what we're doing, but do expect to see an announcement from us in Q4, and as I mentioned, this is pre-COVID numbers. If you look at the bottom, it says restaurant delivery projected to grow to $200 billion by 2025, and that was a pre-COVID number. It may come even faster, and we feel that we are uniquely positioned to take advantage of that. The chart you see now simply reflects the use cases for our EVs and as a reminder, I mentioned we built the ecosystem needed to support these commercial fleets with partnerships like the one we have with Element Fleet Management. Again, without it, it's just not possible to scale. If you look at the top top left, you see our light-duty electric trucks for using use in moving cargo and delivery, security, housekeeping, et cetera. Uh, bottom left, uh, our electric vaccination vehicle. I mentioned we announced it on March the 8th. We've shown it in conjunction with partners, Club Car Gallery and Element, to both the CDC and the FEMA, um, as you might expect. Uh, a lot of interest there, but selling to federal, state, and local, uh, much much longer sales cycle than we would like. Uh, top right, you'll see our, our three-wheeled vehicle for restaurant delivery, but again, that was a concept vehicle that is not the one and doesn't even look like the one that we're going to launch later this year. And then, of course, bottom right, our, our mobile hospitality vehicle for the supply of food and beverage to the masses without forcing them into, into the dining halls. Uh, I mentioned club car a number of times. I'll let you read this. It's a quote from club car. Uh, In essence, what we do with club car is we help them get to market with a complimentary solution and we do it faster and less expensive than they do it with their own traditional business model. Strong relationship, expect to expand it to overseas next year. We went from uh, the U.S. to include Canada and Mexico. Now we're in uh, the rest of Latin America. Uh, Very good relationship. Mark Wagner, their president, likes to describe us as the tip of the spear that helps them get to new markets cheaper and faster than they could do it themselves. So they use our infrastructure to build their core products, and uh, and we help them get with new products to a lot of new markets uh, they've never participated in.
I think if you summarize this, we like no doubt we are competing in a large and growing market, particularly the uh, delivery market. Last mile delivery estimated to grow. And this is not restaurant. This is just last mile delivery estimated to grow to over 50 billion by 2022, uh, poised for growth over the next decade. Our fleet management customers have reduced their operating expenses by as much as 50% using our light duty electric truck. Uh, I mentioned the partnerships that we have with Club Car and Gallery and Karma and Element uh, in an effort to sustainably support large commercial fleets. Uh, again, my impression is too many companies focus only on the vehicle and they forget the important parts to support the fleet. Um, we're in the commercial utility segment of the market where there is real need for purpose-built all-electric vehicles where real benefits are seen. And as I mentioned, this is a important one. If you're going to invest in any EV company that's placed in the commercial space, um, I said the takeaway from us versus other EV manufacturers focusing on last mile delivery or urban delivery is the ecosystem of partnerships. And you cannot have a conversation with a C-suite of any of the major restaurant chains only talk about your vehicle. Again, you, you need to have an ecosystem in place. And when you get the question, how do I store it? How do I charge it? How do I finance it? How do I regularly maintain it? How do I repair it when it breaks down the field? How do I insure it? And how do I dispose it into life? Nobody else has that. Nobody. Uh, I encourage anyone contemplating investment in EV manufacturer focused on commercial to ask those questions and see what answer you get. So with that, it was a fairly quick overview of us. What I'd like to do now is open it up to any questions we've got. Um, let's see here. First question I see here, what are some value catalysts for the company for the rest of 2021? Good question. Let me answer that. Um, you will see a teaser from us right after Labor Day. Uh, and it will share with you just enough to, I think, whet your appetite for our, uh, our restaurant delivery that I've talked about. Um, you will also see an announcement from us around the same time frame of who we're working with in development of this next generation vehicle and who will also manufacture it for us. And it will be a name that you likely recognize if you follow automotive at all. So I expect that uh, the success that we're having in our light duty electric truck with our partner club car and, and elements fairly new to that, but the volumes that we see in restaurant delivery from what we're already being uh, asked to quote on is uh, quite, quite significant, much more than anything we've seen so far. So I, I hope that answers the question. Um, any other questions? I don't see any other right now. This was, oh, maybe there is another one here. I think I saw a third one pop up. Um, this, no, this is not a question, but I may want to bring this up because it did come up in one of the meetings that I had uh, over the last three days. Uh, we recently issued a press release a week ago Tuesday that we received a second order within four weeks for $2.9 million from our, uh, from Club Car for this next generation light duty electric truck. And uh, we didn't see much movement as far as uh, response to the stock in the market. And I was talking to another investment bank, and they said, Rod, hard to get excited about $2.9 million order when you're burning $3 million a month. Let me address that. Our operating expense is running around $500,000 a month. The $2.5 million that we're spending, which looks like $3 million a month, is entirely uh, related to the development expense of our next generation vehicle. And we'll finish that development in Q1 of next year. So that is not an operating expense as much as it is a development expense with the operating expense running closer to half a million, not three million. Ah, what about the vaccine? Here's another question. What about the vaccine vehicle that was mentioned earlier this year? Well, again, uh, we launched it March the 8th. We toured uh, roughly, I think it was nine cities from Atlanta, a uh, number of universities in Florida. We had it in L.A., Orange County, Dallas, uh, Seattle, Boston, uh, San Jose, and um, quite a bit of interest. Uh, Element took it to some of their customers, and we've got a number of customers evaluating it. But again, uh, the funding for it in a lot of cases is coming from the federal government, flowing down at the state level, and everybody wants it and trying to fund it is uh, – seems to be the, the big question right now. So, um, again, I mentioned earlier that it's a, the, the challenge is getting it through the bureaucracy of, uh, 
of, of funding from our federal government or state and local. But we're, uh, we're guardedly optimistic. We think it's a, a great way to help get, uh, get needles in more arms of people that want it. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Go back. Here's another one. Are you expecting your current cash position to take you to positive cash flow? The answer is yes with one caveat. Um, you got to remember, we're building vehicles. I, I remind my board of directors quite often. Uh, we're not writing software in Bangalore, India. We are building vehicles that people put their lives in, and these vehicles need to be robust. They need to be safe and expect people to make deliveries in these for years. Um, the reason I mention that is there is a high likelihood in our effort to grow and establish ourselves and sustain our business, uh, we may be looking at some investments. So currently, we have plenty of cash to get us to positive cash flow. The, the, one of the reasons we might raise more cash would be simply a function of either an investment or an acquisition. So from a cash flow perspective, we're fine. Uh, we're looking at uh, a couple of companies that we make and make an investment in that I think would bring, up, uh, bring our value proposition, make it even more meaningful to some of these large restaurant chains that are interested in us. But from a pure cash perspective and where we are today, we're in great shape and don't expect to have to raise any more cash. Good questions. If we don't have any more questions, um, I encourage you to go to our website, ayro.com. Uh, you can send any emails. I see all the ones that come in to investors or sales at ayro.com. I also encourage you to follow us closely. You may want to uh, put an alert in your uh, Gmail account because, as I mentioned, uh, you're likely going to see a teaser announced from us shortly after Labor Day. A much bigger announcement in uh, in November. Uh, whoops, looks like we got one more question. Let me let me see what it was. One second here. Um, oh, there it is. Yes, a great question. Can you comment on the recent declining stock price? Uh, I can. I can't explain it. Uh, I'm going to be candid with you. Um, from the orders we've already received this year, hard purchase orders, not not forecast, these are purchase orders, um, we will grow five or six X year over year. As I mentioned, no debt, plenty of cash. Uh, a year ago, we didn't have the relationship we have today with Carmel. We didn't have the relationship we have with Element. And uh, there's no clear explanation as to why our stock is declining. Um, anybody that wants to participate in the commercial space, as I mentioned, and I know I beat this dead horse, if you don't have the ecosystem to go support in large volumes, thousands of vehicles, um, you're not going to be successful. We do have that. Um, I, I will tell you this. I think some people may be looking at what we've been spending during the development of this next generation delivery vehicle and, and look at the revenue versus that. And that would be understandable, which is why I mentioned that two and a half of the three million we're burning right now is all around development. Um, but the return on that, uh, I'll give you an example. Take Chipotle, Firehouse Subs, Jimmy John's, and Panera Bread. 8,612 locations. On average, they said they need about nine vehicles per location. That's over 80,000 vehicles. Uh, obviously, we're not forecasting we're going to sell that, but that's just an example. You compare that to the size of the LSV market and what we're selling there, and we're doing very well, but not anywhere in those kinds of volumes. Uh, we don't talk about it because we don't want to telegraph. So I, I wish I had a, a better answer for you, but I don't think there's any justification for, uh, for our stock price because I believe we're the only guys with a strategy. You can take, uh, take some of the other companies that have built consumer vehicles, three-wheel consumer vehicles, and uh, 
tried to sell them as consumer vehicles, weren't very successful, tried to turn them into commercial vehicles, and only sell direct. And I don't know how you sell direct because in 85 90% of the states, it's against the law to sell direct as an automobile manufacturer, which is why we chose uh, to work with, uh, with channels like Club Car and, and then also Element Fleet Management. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think we're the most undervalued stock among the EV sector. And you know what? Uh, I'm glad that uh, I didn't take a lot of cash here in the beginning and I took it in equity because uh, I haven't been more bullish on a company than this one in many, many years. We'll wait a little longer and see if we've got any more questions. We've got another four minutes. Anyway. Well, I'm waiting to see if there's any questions. One way that I, I encourage you to think about us is uh, we do not create a product and then try to find a home for it. Uh, I've worked in companies like that. We try to understand gaps in the market or places in the market that are being underserved, we try to understand it, understand our competencies, and then go build a solution to address that. We like to say we don't build vehicles that deliver food. We build food delivery vehicles. And that's really the tip of the iceberg. Uh, because of the relationship we have with Element Fleet Management, they've, they've said, look, you need to expand your focus to not just restaurant delivery, but also to farm and grocery. Because they have 5,500 customers that have anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand vehicles, they have you know, frequent contact with these customers, and you take – when you talk about pharma, I'm talking about Rite Aid, CVS, Walgreens. Those companies deliver today, but they don't deliver consumer – I mean, I'm sorry, they don't deliver prescriptions to consumers. And why do they not deliver it? Because they have no easy way to maintain chain of control of a prescription from the pharmacy to ensure it gets to the intended, um, intended consumer. Well, the solution that we're creating in conjunction with the advisory council will address that. And if we do that and nobody else does, um, Katie, bar the door. Big opportunities. I just said, give you one example of that. Looks like I got one more question. Let's see here. Uh, I'm an investor just checking in. What time is the presentation? Well, it's over in three minutes. Um, sorry, you, you missed it. Um, if you send an email to uh, investor at AYRO.com, I'm happy to reply to you. Uh, but we've got back-to-back -back presentations here. I'm sorry uh, you get the time right. Um, we've got a couple more minutes, so I'll stay on here and see if anybody else has any other questions. Good question so far. Thank you. If I'm sure that many of you, we've got a couple of minutes, I'll make this comment. I, I, for those of you that may not be as close to the EV market, um, if there's any doubt whether the big companies are committed to this, I'll throw this one data point at you. The, uh, the number one selling vehicle, not the number one selling truck, the number one selling vehicle for the last 44 years in the United States has been the Ford F-150. And back in May, Ford announced their first fully electric vehicle. They're referring to it as the Ford F-150 Lightning. And imagine this, a company like Ford, who has not only a, a great selling truck and a history of that, but the best selling vehicle for 44 years in the U.S. And they put all their weight behind the success here. You're going to see that. So if there's any question in the not too distant future, and, and I'm talking on the consumer side, even though we play on the commercial side exclusively, but in the not-too-distant future, that, that overlap is going to cross where the resale value of an internal combustion vehicle is going to drop quickly. Because when somebody buys one, are they going to replace it with another in internal combustion engine vehicle? Probably not. It's going to be an electric vehicle. So for, your, for, for my unsolicited opinion is, as you think about that in your own lives, not just in your commercial applications, uh, you might want to think about that because – this is going to try and change, I think, perhaps faster than we, we might have expected. i got one last question. Let's see what it is. What do you perceive as the most critical threat to the execution of your plans? I'll tell you what it is. Um, it's likely short-term going to be this, you know, enough supply to support the demand on lithium batteries. Even though we have the relationship we have, uh, it still worries me a bit because as EVs continue to grow very, very quickly, 
there's going to be growing demand on lithium. And uh, it's somewhat of a fear of ours, but again, because of the relationship we have with Wong Chong, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. We are buying ahead of what our demand looks like. But that, to me, would be the, uh, the most near-term threat. Long-term, it's all about execution. Uh, I don't think it's much more than that. Um, I joined Dell early in my career when they less, were less than a billion dollars and less, left years later when they were many billions. So I understand the importance of getting big, fast in execution, and, and my team understands that here, and that's exactly what we're doing. So looks like uh, looks like there's one more. See if we've got time for one last question. Uh, are you still trying to get your EVs and universities? I'm not trying to. They're in there. We're in quite a number of universities across the country. Uh, Sodexo and Aramark are buying these from Club Car. Uh, and as I said, they're placing them uh, in strategic places around the university. So as students come out, they can uh, pick up a bagel and something to drink, run their student ID, and go to their next class. So we're already into quite a number of universities. If you go to our website, you'll see the announcement of our number of them there and we expect to have some more press coming out in September about some announcements that uh, Club Car sold more of our uh, mobile hospitality vehicles in a more university. So I uh, hope that answered the question. And it looks like we're probably out of time. Um, thank you all very much. Appreciate you uh, tuning in to listen to us today. And uh, I hope you'll follow us at AYRO.com. Thank you for the time today. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude Arrow presentation. Thank you for joining. You may now disconnect.